The gold standard for assessing causal relations requires manipulation. The ideal procedure for determining causation would allow comparison between readiness potentials for spontaneously timed movements that were consciously intended with those that were not. Hypnosis may provide a possible mechanism by which movements can be elicited outside of reportable awareness or intention. Thus, in one experiment, my colleagues and I used hypnosis to compare readiness potentials preceding hypnotically induced and volitionally induced movements. This involved two stages, the hypnotic induction and what is called the post-hypnotic suggestion. Hypnotic induction is the process of inducing a trance-like state via guided imagery. A post-hypnotic suggestion is an instruction given to a hypnotized person that is to be followed after waking from the hypnotic state. We began by finding highly hypnotizable subjects. Then we carried out a first hypnotic induction where we implanted a post-hypnotic suggestion followed by a first task phase, then a second hypnotic induction to remove the post-hypnotic suggestion, again followed by a second experimental task phase. We then prepared each subject for EEG. The task was to press a ball while watching a movie. When subjects were conscious but acting on the basis of a post-hypnotic suggestion, they pressed the ball in their hand when a trigger was present on the screen that they had been commanded during the hypnosis induction phase to obey. Importantly, they were not consciously aware of why they were pressing the ball. From their conscious point of view, pressing just happened. We gave them a cover story saying that tests in the equipment might lead their arm muscles to contract so that they would not suspect anything. Without getting into all the details, we found that readiness potentials and lateralized readiness potentials look indistinguishable, whether or not subjects are conscious of having caused a motor act. These results suggest that the readiness potential and the lateralized readiness potential happen whether or not there is a conscious feeling of willing. Libet inferred from his data that the neural processes that generate the readiness potential cause the subsequent conscious proximal will, making it only illusorily causal of the subsequent motor act. Given the results of our own and others' recent experiments, I conclude that neither the readiness potential nor the lateralized readiness potential arise from neural processes causal of conscious willing. Also, the readiness potential does not reflect uniquely motor-related processing, while the lateralized readiness potential reflects a motor command. Since both the readiness potential and lateralized readiness potential occur even when subjects operating under a post-hypnotic suggestion make a motor act, Without even being conscious of having commanded it, it seems that the readiness potential and lateralized readiness potential are simply unrelated to conscious intentions to move at all. Moreover, the readiness potential does not reflect the presence of an unconscious decision to move since it occurs in the absence of movement and is not time-locked to movement. It would appear to reflect a more remote process that is neither necessary nor sufficient to cause movement. One hypothesis is that the readiness potential reflects one or more of a number of other general processes such as anticipation or preparation that accompany actions in the Libet paradigm but are not explicitly measured by it. Or maybe, as Sugar and colleagues argue, the readiness potential is an artifact of averaging noise relative to time W. Given results like these, I think it's safe to say that Libet overreached in his claims about free will and that his experimental paradigm and results do not pose a threat to free will. To his credit, he did acknowledge that there might be other scenarios where conscious willing might be causal of movement, but his findings are only about a very tiny class of arbitrary actions, so they should not be generalized into broad conclusions about all actions or about free will in general. If distal willing and deliberation are where the action is in free will, then future experiments should go beyond the Libet tradition to test whether distal intentions and willing play a causal role in subsequent actions.